Welcome to Culture and Society of Medieval Japan, India, and Imperial China. This is Melinda Klein. China by the 8th century had 50 million people. By the 12th century, the Chinese population numbered 110 million. Marketing and exporting industrial made goods had increased. This nation would enjoy an enlightened period of intellectual traditions and inventions that would capture the attention of the Western world during the Middle Ages and during the Renaissance. For several centuries, the Chinese economy had grown greatly, and in fields as diverse as rice cultivation, the production of iron and steel, and the printing of books to gunpowder. The Chinese system of government during the Song period was established with the power in the hands of highly educated scholarly officials. In medieval Japan, the government structure, economy, and social experiences, along with their history, was different. While both nations were based on agriculture, China experienced an industrial revolution by the 9th century and Japan was a feudal society with family dynasties fighting one another for power over and over. The founders of the Song Dynasty built an effective centralized bureaucracy staffed with civilian scholarly officials. The Song Dynasty is notable for the development of cities not only for administrative purposes, but also as centers of trade, industry, and maritime commerce. By the 13th century, the Song Dynasty was at an end by 1279, after being conquered by the Mongols. During the Han Dynasty, intellectual, literary, and artistic endeavors were revived and flourished. Technological advances also marked this period. One of the greatest Chinese inventions, paper, dates from the Han Dynasty. Several Roman embassies to China are recounted in their history. Good exchanges such as Chinese silk, African ivory, and Roman incense increased the contacts between East and West. During the Han Dynasty in 124 BC, Emperor Wu established an elite imperial academy to teach specially selected scholarly bureaucrats the wisdom of Confucius and how to apply this knowledge to the problems of governing. A student seeking a government job did not need to be of high birth but had to pass a series of examinations. All tea comes from the same plant, Camellia sinensis, an evergreen tropical plant with green, shiny, pointed leaves that was originally indigenous only to China and India. From 2737 BC, drinking tea spread throughout Chinese culture. By the 3rd century, there were already many stories being told and written about tea and its benefits. Yes, the Chinese government for centuries had a monopoly on tea, which would not end until the 19th century. The Hainian period is considered the peak of Japanese imperial court and noted for its art, especially poetry and literature. Hanian means peace or tranquility in Japanese. Japanese rule lay with the emperor, but in fact power was wielded by the nobility. To protect their interests in the provinces, noble families required guards, police, and soldiers. The warrior class made steady gains through the Hanian period. Japan's medieval era was characterized by the emergence of a ruling class of warriors, the samurai. By the 12th century, the shogun, the top warrior, ruled Japan, 
and the emperor was merely a figurehead. Also in the 12th century, Zen Buddhism is introduced by a monk and becomes popular among the samurai, the leading class in Japanese society. Japanese medieval society experienced a significant distance between elites and peasants. Much like farmers in contemporary Song China, Japanese farmers adopted new grains of rice, made use of fertilizers, and improved irrigation systems for rice paddies. Besides farming, ordinary Japanese people could make a living working as a trader, fisherman, artisan, and entertainer. Twice the Mongols attempted to invade Japan. This was a failure. The kamikaze winds completely converted the Mongolian fleet into flotsam and jetsam. Japanese foreign policy was isolationism against those who would come to Japan in seeking trade or for other reasons. This would continue not only from the 16th century with the Portuguese, but throughout the 17th, 18th, and into the 19th century. India, geographically speaking, consists of a northern mountain belt, great plains along the northern structure, and the peninsula, which is very mountainous, but protects India from cold Arctic winds from the north, and several passes that open up India to invasion, particularly from the west through Afghanistan. Hence, there were many empires that stretched from northern India through Afghanistan. The Ganges Valley produced the most valuable agricultural land in India, and this was its wealthiest part. It had the most rain, and there were year-round rivers that could provide water, which meant even in drought years, people had water to grow food. According to the national religion, Hinduism, these are three key values, duty, detachment, and devotion. Listed here is a simple illustration of the social structure known as the caste system. Eventually, there would be 3,000 castes that had been created to date. Only the first three castes could participate in religion and read holy texts. The last caste consists of people who did the worst work and should not be associated with. Religion and the state were strongly separate in India, but cultural unity based on religion was strong, like much of Europe. From the 12th century to the 20th century, India was ruled by foreigners. The Muslims came in, conquered northern India, what is now Pakistan. They brought in administrators from the Middle East. They built mosques. Hindus objected to Islam because Muslims shunned pork, which Hindus ate, and had other conflicts as well. Taking into account the presence of Europeans by the 17th century, Muslim rule in India was strained. While the British Empire had trading interests in India from 1603, the Mughal Empire run by Muslims in India was all but at an end by the early 18th century and by 1847. England's Queen Victoria offered administrative rule, which continued until 1947, after World War II. By the 16th century, India's economy had grown and the population numbered at about 10 million people.